Well, hello, friend. Hello, 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 hello. My name is Ginger. I'm a priest with the Celtic Christian Church. Welcome to Coffee Break, Prayer and Faith and Gabora. It's St. Patrick's Day. So we of the Celtic Christian Church, of course, um, are especially grateful for St. Patrick's loving legacy, right? Did you know that Patrick left behind writings? Yes! Almost 2,000 years ago, the man wrote, we have at least two separate documents written by Patrick. One is a letter and one is his, he calls it his confession. Basically, it's sort of an autobiographical response to slanderous charges. He had to defend himself. And he does so by describing his life and, and what he did in case you don't know the thumbnail version is that Patrick was kidnapped by raiders, Irish raiders, when he was 15 years old. He was the child of like a mid-level Roman household kind of thing. Actually, his dad was a deacon and his grandfather was a priest. I think they would, be, would have been considered like minor nobility in the Roman Empire. So they were in Britain. And on the coast, obviously, so Patrick was picked up by slavers in a raid that dragged off, oh, he says, thousands of people. He wound up in a very isolated area. And um, if you want to hear about his daring escape, it's incredible. You can pick up a copy on the Internet for free. I'm sure you can just Google Patrick's confession and, uh, and read about his story. It's just amazing. Um, and it's a true story. So there you go. Now, I would just like to share with you that St. Patrick, when I was a young woman, he was my hero for his deep faith, for his generosity of spirit. He escaped slavery, returned home, and eventually turned around and came back to Ireland to share the good news of the gospel with the um, culture that had tormented him when he was young. So um, just a very, I think of him as the patron saint of immigrants and slaves. And of course, the Celts. He ends his confession, the very last words are that he asks a request of those who believe and revere God. If any of you see fit to examine or to obtain this document, which has been written in Ireland by Patrick, an uneducated sinner, do not attribute to me in my ignorance the little I achieved or point it out that pleased God. Let your conclusion and the general opinion rather be the real truth, that my success was the gift of of God. I always get a little teary at that thought. Yes, Patrick, your success was the gift of God, a gift that reverberates and gives over and over and over again as the child and grandchild of um, people who identified as Irish. I'm grateful to Patrick for the gift of Christianity and so much more, right? So let's Let's take a moment to thank God for the way our lives echo. I'm sure Patrick would have been astounded to know that almost 2,000 years later, people were still celebrating um, his work, or at least his name, right? So let's begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the gracious Trinity who Patrick worshipped and served in love. Thank you, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and we shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Friend, let's just take two nice big breaths just to help us come back to now, okay? And then we'll say a brief prayer. Thank you, friend. Lord Jesus, we thank you 
and for the life and the legacy of this one person, Patrick, who loved you so much and chose a life of generosity and courage, who, I don't want to say overcame the trauma of his youth, because actually, when you read his confession, it sounds like he never quite did get over the just the sheer trauma of it. But um, we thank you that you used his loving heart, that you were with him as his friend, as his loving companion, even in the horrors of slavery, he says, that he knew you were with him, loving him, and that you were with him in, in his work so that what he did still echoes on and on and on and on and on. Patrick thought he was living in the end times. He thought he had reached the end of the earth, that Ireland was it. After that, there lie dragons, right? Nothing else. And so in the um, worldview where he grew up, that meant the end of time. Once the gospel was preached to everybody, to the West and to the East, as far as he knew, the East was done and the West he was taken care of. So... Alrighty for you, Lord, come on back. So he lived with this great sense of urgency. Help us, too, to feel that sense of urgency, to love you with zeal, not because the world is about to end, but because the world needs you and needs us, needs our love and our wisdom. So um, thank you, St. Patrick, for all you did. We ask for your prayers that we would be generous we would be fiercely protective of the vulnerable as you were, that we too would honor slaves and strangers in our land and that we would share the good news of Jesus with wisdom and courage. And this we ask in Jesus' name, amen. When my husband Dave asked me to share with you a quick um, experience I had at the St. Patrick's Day Parade in my community, I was on... Um, it was going down like this four-lane street in our little town. And across the street, I could see there were there was a little girl. She was, I don't know, maybe seven, seven, eight years old. And she would wait eagerly as the different marching bands came by. And every time a marching band came by, she'd get ready. She was holding, just holding super tight, this little wooden stick with an Irish, one of the little plastic Irish flags you see, right? holding it, and as soon as people started walking by, she'd go, start marching with the bands. And then, of course, the long legs would take them away, and she'd run and wait for the next one. It was so funny and very cute. I felt like I was watching a, um, a, a Norman Rockwell painting come to life, right, with the little one in, at the parade. And it reminds me, too, that um, whether... We celebrate St. Patrick's Day as a cultural festival, as a religious feast, or just because it's fun. That gift of God still echoes there, right? In the joy of community. My little neighbors were all dressed up. Um, I think one of them is Irish, the other one's Italian. And there's, we have a large community of uh, Sikhs in our neighborhood, and I saw a couple people there. It was just wonderful because we're all there celebrating community as well as the good news that Patrick shared. So be blessed to stay in every day, my friend, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.